Hi, now here we've got an example on coordinate geometry of a circle that uh, you might like to try. If so, just give you a moment to pause the video, come back when ready and you can check your work solution with mine. OK, welcome back if you had a go. So what we've got here is the circle C it has equation x squared plus y squared minus 20x minus 24y plus 195 equals 0. And the centre of C is at the point M. And we've got to find in part 1 the coordinates of the point M and the radius of the circle C. Now, just as a brief reminder, you should be familiar with the general form of the equation of a circle. It's x minus x1 all squared plus y minus y1 all squared equals the radius squared. The centre has coordinates x1, y1 and the radius is given by r. So in order to do this, what we've got to do is take our form of the equation of a circle and then I'm going to complete the square. And I'm assuming that you're familiar with completing the square and if, if not you can always go on my website examsolutions.net and I've got videos on that. So to complete the square what we do is we look at the term x squared and the term minus 20x and we group that in such a way that we have x there with a squared on the outside and we halve the coefficient of x. The coefficient of x is the minus 20. We halve it, gives us minus 10. Now if you were to square this out, you'd get x squared minus 10x minus another 10x, which is the minus 20x, but then you'd get plus 100, the minus 10, if you were to square it. Well, we just want to be left with x squared minus 20x, so we have to subtract that 100. OK, so that's completing the square across the x squared and the minus 20x. We do much the same for y squared and minus 24y. That is, we set up a bracket with a squared there, and we have y, and then we take the coefficient of y, which is minus 24, and halve it, so that's minus 12. If you were to expand this, you'd get y squared minus 12y minus another 12y, which is minus 24y, but you'd get plus 144, the result of minus 12 all squared. We don't want that 144, so we subtract it. So that portion there would give us y squared minus 24y. Then we got the plus 195, and all of this equals 0. So if we just tidy this up, we therefore have x minus 10 all squared. We've got this term here, plus y minus 12 all squared. Now we've got minus 100 minus 144 plus 195. If we work those out, we end up with minus 49. So if we add 49 to both sides, it comes to equal 49. Now we can compare this with this format here and we can see that therefore our answer to part 1 where we were asked to work out what the center was, okay, the center has coordinates m and they're going to be 10 and 12. 10 and 12 there then, okay? And in part 2 we're asked to work out what the radius is. And the radius is given by the square root of 49. Okay, because that is r squared there. So the radius is the square root of 49, which, when you take a square root, don't, it's not going to be plus or minus in an example like this, because we're only concerned with the positive value, because it's a length. So we just get 7. Okay, so that's the first part. Now, we're told that n is the point with coordinates 25, 32. And we've got to find the length of the line mn. Now, what I want to do at this stage is just draw a sketch of our circle. Generally, I would always encourage you to do sketches when it comes to coordinate geometry. And uh, this one is certainly no exception. 
So what we've got is our circle. It's got a center at the point M, coordinates 10 across, 12 up. Let's just suppose that it's, say, about there-ish, OK? That's our point M with coordinates 10, 12. And we've got a circle of radius 7, so we'll just put a circle in there. It's not necessarily a perfect circle, but uh, just give us an idea. And we've got this point N with coordinates 25, 32. So if we go 25 across, 32 up, there's our point N. Coordinates are 25, 32. So we've got to find this distance from M to N. And the distance between two points just is worked out through Pythagoras' theorem. So if we're working out that distance mn, it's going to be, we can, we can imagine like a, a right angle triangle drawn in here, and the distance from here to vertically below this point here is going to be the result of 25 minus 10. So we've got 25 minus 10, a total length of 15 units, we'd want to square that distance and add it to this distance up here, squared. That distance is going to be the difference in the y-coordinates, 32 minus 12. 32 minus 12, and would square that. OK, so that clearly is a distance of 20 units just up here. OK, so uh, once we've got that, remember Pythagoras' theorem is mn all squared equals the sum of the squares the other two sides. We just want mn, so we'll just take the square root of all of that. And if you work that out, you've got the square root of 625. And the square root of 625, remember we're looking for a length, so it's going to be the positive value is just 25. OK, so that's that part there. And in this next part, we're told that the tangent to our circle C, let's just label that C, the tangent to C at the point P on the circle passes through the point N. Find the length of the line NP. Now, that means our tangent could be, say, just coming from here, touching the circle at this point here. And, or, or it could be down to this point here, but by symmetry, that length is not going to change. This point here is P, OK? We've got to find that distance N to P. And to do this, we should be familiar with the fact that the radius of a circle always makes a right angle with the tangent. So again, this is just a simple case of applying Pythagoras' theorem. Because if we want the distance NP, we already know some of these distances. We know that MP, the radius, is 7 units. We know that M to N, we just worked it out, is 25 units. So by Pythagoras' theorem, we can get NP. So NP is going to be equal to the square root, then, of the difference between the squares of our other two sides. That is the hypotenuse squared, mn squared, minus this side uh, here, okay? The radius squared, I should say, mp squared. And if we work that out, we've got the square root then of 25 squared minus 7 squared. And that comes to the square root of 576, which is in fact. 24. Okay, so hope that's given you an idea. If you want more vision on circles, just go on my website examsolutions.net, look under coordinate geometry for circles, and you should find some more info at that point. Okay, 